It's amazing for photographers. I'm trying to get bird photos. cracking you guys and welcome back to another episode of Flight of the Fox where we just spend our whole lives trying to do the stuff we love. Do you want to do that again? Yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> and inspire you to do the same. If you didn't see last week's episode, we were just roaming around Darwin, hanging out, seeing some really cool stuff. If you haven't seen that episode yet, make sure you catch up and be sure to subscribe so I never have to remind you again. This week, though, we are in the magnificent Kakadu National Park, starting a five-day trip through the south of Darwin. We are hitting up some bloody ripper spots in the next couple of episodes, so be sure to be all over it. What do you think? I want to fly my drone. We can't wait to show you these incredible sights, sounds, animals, and just all of the cool stuff. So enjoy this episode, guys. Make sure you're subscribed, and let's get on with it. Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I hope this video is coming out on a Wednesday. Who really knows anymore? So this week we're taking you to Kakadu. I've just finished work and as you can hear through my nasal passages that I am not very well. I came down with a cold last night. Um, but never let the show must go on. Super excited to take you guys with us. And yeah, I'm going to go collapse into bed for an hour. I'll see you in a little bit. I'm back. I'm still sick. I didn't have a sleep. I ended up watching 15 minutes of a TV show, having a shower, and I shaved my legs, which I haven't done in like a month. And I finished back in the car, and I now have kids with me. Say hey. Well, we're back. We're back. Um, so yeah, I feel like trash, but it still should be a really fun week, and I'm really looking forward to it. So we've just left. We got out of the gate at quarter to four. It's now, oh, it's like 10 to four which is pretty good. It's going to take us a couple of hours to get out to the start of Kakadu National Park. So we'll check in with you when we actually get into Kakadu. but I am I swear so this is a famous little Kakadu sign so we're in the north gate of Kakadu there's a north and a south gate so we'll enter through the north and exit out the south to go off to Catherine the sun's just setting but there's all this info here about the culture of the area and yeah it's just really well done it's been done up a lot since I was here last and it talks about all the tidal flats and the lowlands and all the different areas around here and this place is amazingly well known for birds so I'm really excited to do some bird spotting and all kinds of different things, it should be really fun. The sunset is unbelievable. Look at that. So this is actually the first time I've looked back on these photos and after seeing them again it clearly isn't a dingo that we saw it's some kind of mutt dog thing it might have a little bit of dingo in it but that is not the right colouring for a dingo so I'm not really sure what I photographed here we did get to see some more dingoes later down the track though which was really cool I'm already pretty impressed with Kakadu's wildlife I'm really excited to be able to get some really cool wildlife photos so we've just arrived at the Mullabank Bank and we'll check that pronunciation campgrounds. Um, it's quite dark. So we we'll just find somewhere chill, maybe like hopefully away from some creeps. Alright, we made it. Let's um, get set up and cook some tea. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah. Aren't we back at home now? <laughs> this is my home. This is your home. This is our only light. 
totally ever fed. I forgot the cheese and I've got an onion, so we're having spaghetti with just like spaghetti sauce. Let's <laughs> Morning guys, I know it's really really dark right now and I look really atrocious. Um, but we had a pretty rough night's sleep, so we didn't have anything to cover the back window of our car and there was tons of mosquitoes coming in and it sounded like lots of like mini jet planes flying past our ears. So I've just left kids back at camp to have a bit more of a sleep in and I've come down to have a look at this wetlands walk and see what's down here. And then I think today we're going to go to Yellow Water and go on a boat cruise and see some crocodiles and then to McGuck and then hopefully either stay at my guck for the night or go down to Gunlong. So we'll just see how we go today. Also everywhere I go there's these like danger crocodile signs. So I don't feel all that safe walking here alone. I've come about halfway down this track but it's a wetlands and I'm really scared of crocs. I know that's really crazy but I'm gonna turn back just because I don't want anything to go wrong while I'm out here alone. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep? Oh, just wonderful. All right, we managed to get on the road. It is half past seven, and I think we're just gonna keep following this road out. Let me consult my handy dandy map. We're just gonna go down about 4K, and there'll be a left-hand turn. So we stayed there last night. And then we can go down to here, which is where the beautiful caves and the rock art is. Our first stop for today was a magnificent Nulangi Aboriginal rock art site. That is a mouthful. It's an awesome spot that I remember coming to as a kid where you can see some unreal Aboriginal rock art from thousands and thousands of years of history. But first, of course, kids had to do the Mexican hat dance to put the drone up in the air so we could film this magnificent place from above. Oh. Why isn't it a sea card in it? Kim, you had one job. one job. He literally had one job and that was to make sure all the bloody cameras had SD cards in it and he didn't even freaking check. I'm so mad at you. Holy hell, I swear to God. Don't go traveling with boys, they're useless. <laughs> didn't know so there's not much we can do about it. I swear like and of course being all respectful for the indigenous because I understand that drones are quite annoying. What's the point of having a drone if you can't actually fly it anywhere? Like we obviously didn't know that because we took it off from the car park and mm -hmm. the sign was literally at the entrance. Look. Oh, uh. So we're on the walk and the walk is a 1.5 kilometer return and there's one main pass that's actually wheelchair accessible but then there's all these other ones that sort of jut off and they're a bit more rugged. And this one sort of takes you in behind the rock and past all of the, some kind of animal over there, <laughs> takes you past all of the um, rock art sites. And I'm gonna die because I have a cold and this is like hard climbing. Exercise. <laughs> Exercise. We're gonna head down here and go see if we can find some handprints. Anna, bush chook. Bush chook. Bush chook, <gasps> running away. Anna, bush chook. <laughs> Hi, friend. This is the first cave um, and there's all these Aboriginal paintings just down in here. 
and I really wish I could tell you what they all meant, but I really have zero idea. But I would definitely recommend doing one of the guided tours through here. They're free and they're with the rangers and you can learn about what all of these mean. Definitely, definitely worth it. Like this one here kind of looks like a kangaroo chasing a lizard, but I know that's not what it means. It's quite freaky, don't you reckon? It is freaky, but remember that um, Manuka cave? That's yeah, freaky. Mulka's cave, Mulka's that was cave. a scary story. But that's just, something about that picture there is just really like making me feel very weird. These ones are really pretty. Look at the detail in that one. That's definitely a kangaroo. Look at the detail in like some of these ones. With like the white and then all the lines oh, through it. So beautiful. Like the clay bean. Looks like a clay. So pretty. Wow, these ones are cool. So there's a painting right here and it's definitely the most spectacular that I've seen in the whole park. But out of traditional, sorry, out of respect for the traditional owners, they don't want us to photograph it. Um, but it is really spectacular. So even though you could watch a million blogs on Kakadu, there's still stuff that we just can't show you. And I'm telling you, it is freaking magnificent. It is a beautiful painting. But if you do come, it's called Na Bullwin Bullwin. Yep. It's amazing. So this is interesting. It says the rock art here was painted to illustrate an aspect of a story. This may be a creation story, a hunting experience, or some other aspect of life. If you were not there when a painting was done, it is hard to know exactly what the story is. Some rock art stories are not for everyone to know. Some rock art is sacred and not for everyone to see. So you guys, I hope you loved our first episode of Kakadu. How incredible is that Aboriginal rock art? It absolutely blows my mind, the Dreamtime stories that come out of this place. It's absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, next week, the adventure keeps going. We find ourselves on the Yellow Water Billabong Cruise, which is just the coolest thing ever. And we get soup up close and personal with even more crocodiles. You would think we would be over them by now, but no. So stay tuned for that one. In the following weeks, we are also hitting up Catherine again and the stunning Mataranka, which is just a place that often gets overlooked, but it's one of my favorite places in all of Australia. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe and keep up with our adventures and we'll catch you next week. Bye. That meant I was like, you don't bloody clean your room. I'm gonna throw a yam at you and that evil spirit of the Nabu Windu Win, whatever his name is. <laughs>